Hello children, hope you remember about variations and evolutionary theories put forth by Lamarck and Darwin. The gradual change that occurs in organisms as a slow and continuous process is known as evolution. Lamarck stated that organisms inherit the acquired characteristics as observed in the stretched neck of a giraffe. Darwin proposed natural selection leads to evolution over a long period. I am Shivajit. And today with me is Shailaja. In this video, we'll explain the topic of speciation and evidence of evolution from the lesson Heredity and Evolution from Class 10 Biology. Recall that among the population of red beetles, suddenly green beetle produced in progeny. Later, the population of green beetles increased. The variation in the beetle population producing green colored beetles protected them from being eaten by crows. So, this will be an advantage for the beetle population and an example of the evolution of new species. Learning Outcomes After studying this topic, you will be knowing about speciation, Evidence from homologous and analogous organs. Evidence from embryology. Evidence from fossils. Human Evolution Keywords Microevolution Macroevolution Homologous Organs Analogous organs, embryological evidence, fossils, common ancestor. Vestigial organs, let us see the concept map on evidences of evolution. Speciation. How new species are evolved? Some variations 
in a population are the traits that help to adapt to the environment. These organisms are going to survive more efficiently. But in the same population, the organisms with the non-beneficial traits may not be adapted to the environment. They are going to perish or be eliminated slowly like red and blue beetles in a population. These small changes within the species, for example, the color of beetles from red to green are known as microevolution. The formation of new species is known as speciation or also known as macroevolution. The red and green beetles can mate with each other and can have offspring. Let us imagine that red and green beetles are separated by some cause like crows dropping some beetles accidentally in far away places for long years. There might be a lot of variations taking place in these years in the red and green beetle population. Now, even though they may meet accidentally, they cannot mate and produce new offspring. They can only mate in their population, either red or green and can reproduce their offspring. Thus, new species have been formed. Evidence of evolution How does the evolution of organism take place? Scientists propose theories based on evidence or proof. In the same way, the evolution of organisms requires evidence. To understand evolutionary relationships, we identify that the comparative study of morphology and anatomy of animals reveals a common set of characteristics. These traits in different organisms would be similar because they are inherited from a common ancestor. Homologous organs The homologous organs have been inherited from common ancestors with similar developmental patterns in embryos. The forelimbs of mammals are homologous structures. A human hand, a front leg of a cat, the flipper of a whale and a bat's wing look dissimilar and adapted for different functions. Their mode of development and the basic structure of bone are similar. For example, the forelimb of a whale the wing of a bat, the leg of a cheetah,
the claw of a mole and the hand of a man. These are called homologous organs, evolved from a common ancestor and this type of evolution is called divergent evolution. Analogous organs The analogous organs look similar and perform similar functions but they have different origins and developmental patterns. The function of the wings of a bat, the wings of a bird and the wings of an insect are similar. But their basic structures are different. These organs which are structurally different but functionally similar are known as analogous organs. This type of evolution is called convergent evolution. Evidence from embryology Embryology is a study of the development of an organism from the egg to the adult stage. The embryos from fish to mammals are similar in their early stages of development. The tadpole of a frog resembles fish more than the frog. This may indicate that the life history of every individual exhibits the structural features of their ancestors. This strengthens the view of the existence of a common ancestor from which all these have evolved. Evidence from fossils Some species existed million years ago but are not found now. They might be extinct and some of them may be found in the form of fossils. For example, dinosaurs, the biggest animals on land, were present a long time ago but now they are extinct. What are fossils? Fossils are evidence of ancient life forms or ancient habitats preserved by natural processes. Fossil evidence is typically preserved within the sediments deposited beneath water and land. They can be actual remains like bones or seeds or even traces of past. Even such as dinosaurs, footprints, or ripple marks on a prehistoric shore. Usually, when organisms die, their bodies will be decomposed and lost. Sometimes the body or some parts of the body do not decompose completely. For example, imprinting or casting of a dead insect in mud will not decompose quickly and will eventually harden and retain the impression of the insect body parts. All such preserved traces of living organisms are called fossils.
the study of fossils is called paleontology. Paleontologists determine the age of a fossil by using carbon dating method. The breakdown of radioactive isotopes of certain elements like carbon, uranium and potassium takes place at a known rate. So, the age of rock or mineral containing isotopes can be calculated. Archaeopteryx is the oldest known fossil bird. It was an early bird-like form found in the Jurassic period. It is considered to be a connecting link between reptiles and birds. It had wings with feathers like a bird. It had a long tail, clawed digits and conical teeth like a reptile. Human evolution Human evolution is the evolutionary process of the appearance of a modern human being. The present human beings also have an evolutionary history like plants and other animals. Every man-like forms appeared about 7,50,000 years ago. The first fossil of species of man, the Homo sapiens, indicates that true man appeared on the earth 2,50,000 years ago. Evolution of man through ages Homo habilis lived between 1.6 to 2.5 million years ago. Homo erectus lived between 1 to 1.8 million years ago. Homo sapiens neanderthalensis lived between 2,30,000 to 3,00,000 years ago. The present man, Homo sapiens, appeared about 40,000 years ago. There is a great diversity in human races, forms and features across the planet. Skin color used to be the commonest way of identifying the so-called races. Some were called black, some white or brown. Over recent years, the evidence has become very clear that there is no biological basis to the notion of the human race. All humans are a single species with a common ancestor and all come from Africa. The earliest members of Homo sapiens and genetic footprints can be traced back to our African roots. A couple of hundred thousand years ago, some of our ancestors left Africa while others stayed on, while the residents spread across Africa. The migrants slowly spread across Africa to West Asia, then to Central Asia 
Eurasia, South Asia, and East Asia. They traveled down the island of Indonesia and the Philippines to Australia and they crossed the Bering Land Bridge to the Americas. They did not go in a single line and went forwards and backward with groups sometimes separating from each other, even moving in and out of Africa. Like all other species on the planet, they had come into being as an accident of evolution and were trying to live as the best as they could. During the course of evolution, some organs remain in the organisms. You have studied the appendix in the digestive system. In human beings, it has no role to play in the process of digestion. In herbivores like rabbit, appendix plays an important role. Such types of organs that are not useful in animals are called vestigial organs. Therefore, the human is said to be a moving museum with nearly 180 vestigial organs. For example, the vermiform appendix, nictitating membrane, caudial vertebrae, Cossacks, etc., are vestigial.